We're full-time RVers and one of us needed surgery. Don't let this nightmare happen to you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, we are so ready to live amazing. And we're close. We're almost there. We've missed, gosh, we've, we missed two whole weeks of talking to you all, and it feels so good to be back. Yeah, yeah, and, and you've missed a month, basically. I mean, you've been flat on your back for a month. Yeah, if you haven't seen them, we did a couple videos talking about when my back went out, and we learned a lot, and this actually, it actually could happen to you, even if you're RVing not full-time, but RVing for a long trip. So we want to kind of go into what happened, um, how it led to surgery. The mistakes that we made. We're also going to talk about what I did and didn't do in the RV that led to the back problems so that you can avoid the same fate, hopefully. Like I said, uh, mistakes were made, and, and in retrospect, I can clearly see what we should have done. So I want to say, <laughs> If you've had sciatica, I my heart goes out to you because what I had was sciatica pain. So it was agony, excruciating pain all the time that nothing would take away. And it got to the point where I would just lay in bed crying. So it, it, was, it was really rough. And I do feel like I've just come out of some trauma. I've had sciatica in the past, but minor compared to what you had. I mean, mine was just discomfort for a few days and then it passed. Yours was just excruciating pain for four weeks. So some of the mistakes we made were, we kept on moving. You know, we have been on the road for three years as full-time RVers and we were headed to the beaches in Florida and we had some mail waiting for us and mm -hmm. we also were excited about hitting the beaches and this was early October and we, we just didn't stop. And I think if we could do it all over again, we would have been like, if Liz is flat on her back, we need to not be traveling at all. Because we were realizing after going to four ERs, I really needed a doctor. I really needed to get- A specialist. Under, yeah, a specialist to get under doctor's care and also get an MRI to know exactly what was going on. I never saw the um, CAT scan. I just knew I had a herniated disc, but I didn't really know the details. Right. Every doctor we talked to said, yeah, these things will, 70% of these self-correct and and uh, surgery is not necessary yeah so we kept moving forward thinking well it'll start getting better tomorrow or the next day and it just kept getting worse but I did get an MRI in Pensacola and I learned that you know it was a big herniated disc 1.5 centimeters which is about five eighths five eighths of an inch and 14 millimeters is 916 so so let's say five eighths. So from what I understand is hernia, herniated discs are measured in millimeters and mine was one and a half centimeters. So it's, mm -hmm. it's plenty big. The advice, you know, I was staying in bed and a lot of the advice was, you know, with a back, you may not want to move, but you really should, you know, get up every hour and walk. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that. I was getting mm -hmm. up every hour, even at night and walking. And I was actually making myself worse and chiropractic care. Same thing. We tried the chiropractor. I can tell you that I cried on the table the second treatment and I said, make it stop. I mean, it was so awful. And we learned, <laughs> using me as a guinea pig, I really should not have had chiropractic care with a, right. with a herniated disc. Right. Also, we learned <laughs> I had, I think, three physical therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. We learned right away that I could not do any stretching or exercises. I was in such acute pain that any movement was making it worse. So the reason why you didn't hear from us the last two Fridays was because I was in too much pain to she even couldn't, do. She couldn't sit up. The timing was horrible because the Blue Angels had were coming to town. There were no campgrounds to be had. And Pensacola is a small town, so there wasn't a lot of choice as far as getting spinal care. Right. So I'm in this agony, which is worse, seeing you know, being in agony or like you watching me being in agony. It was very stressful. And, and that, was a, that was part of what was causing my ability to make the right decisions. I was so, I was so frantic. I just didn't know what to do. And, and I, would, I would say often that I just don't know what to do. And I'm, I was I'm, I'm at a loss. 
And and I no, was, that's on me. I I take responsibility for that. But but I got to where I said, you know, I'm blinded by pain. I I can't make a decision. Right. I just I finally just said, look, because we always make decisions jointly, and we mm-hmm. we agree. And I finally just said, I'm not going to make a decision. I am in too much pain. Right. And that's when you stepped up and right. and and changed everything. Right. Yeah. Towards towards the end of this ordeal. We're now in like coming up to the end of week four. We're yeah, closing I'm, in on week four. I'm calling every every campground in Pensacola to see if I can get a site there and and I'm coming up empty. So I'm I'm looking, okay, where do we go from here? If if we have to move again, which direction do we go do we backtrack and go to Mobile or do we go uh, forward and go to Tallahassee? And I thought, well, Mobile's 50 miles away. Let's just take the shorter tr- the shorter route. And I found the one that we're in here, which is uh, not in the greatest part of town, mm-hmm. but but it is the the campground. The people are nice. It's quiet. It's nice. It's it's nothing fancy, but it's exactly what we need at exactly the right time. And the price is great too. Yeah, the price was. Uh, I was willing to pay anything, it, <laughs> but but the price. It turns out. That it, it's five hundred. It's a little under five hundred dollars a month here. So, if we had to stay, you know, that's that's not going to be a problem. But the key was now, if you're taking a long RV trip, you you want to think about this. And certainly, if you're a full time RVer, the key is if something goes wrong and there's a medical issue, most likely you'll be like us. We stay away from cities. We stay away from urban areas. You will want to change that and get to where there is services and support. And do some looking, because the closer you get to urban, the harder it is, of course, to find campgrounds. So we pack up, make the hour drive to get here. Oh, and, and it's not we, he. I could not do anything. Yeah. He yeah. had to do everything. So and, of course, yeah. make me meals and help me get dressed the whole bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The odds were smiling on us, because I, I started researching doctors, and I just I put in back doctors, Mobile, Alabama, and I got a list of them come, came up. And the first or second one, I can't remember now which it was, was the orthopedic group here in Mobile. And luckily they were able to get us in for, we were coming. We, we came in on Tuesday. We, we had yeah, an appointment we actually, Wednesday. And I called Tuesday when we got here and I said, we just need to see you today. You started reading more on online and and oh the, yes the, the nerve damage and that your bladder yes. your bladder was starting to shut down i was starting to have issues with being able to walk and you know it's kind of dragging my foot and that kind of thing my disc was pushing on that nerve root so hard that i was having all it felt like there was a fire down my leg well, this is where the A team comes in. So we have Patreon members for people that want to connect with us more personally and get more interaction. And one of the members there, Chris Hurley, Christopher Hurley, thank you so much. He was like, if you have a 1.5 centimeter hernia, nothing's going to touch that. Not going to be any physical therapy. Only thing you need is surgery and all you're doing by delaying that is increasing the likelihood of nerve damage. And that really spoke to me because nothing was helping. Dr. Andrew Henderson, highly recommend. So he says, yes, you know, it makes sense to have surgery. And and I asked the questions that you're supposed to ask. I said, you know, (laughs) why should I have the surgery by you? I said, I had heard that you should have a neurosurgeon and he is not a neurosurgeon. Um, No, he's a spine spine. spine surgeon. Now he is... He is the only doctor in Mobile who is certified to do this micro disectomy procedure. Yeah, I had a dis- disectomy. A micro disectomy. Micro disectomy, and yeah. that's what he said. He's the only the incision one. Incision is is about that long. He said if I had a neurosurgeon do it, I would be in the hospital for days because I'd be opened up versus having this small incision. And right. of course, the right. healing would have taken longer, or the expense. Yeah. So that was wonderful, and that was whatever it is, you know, the God smiling on us, a God wink, a miracle, <sighs> whatever you call it, that we happen to get. And th- and he saw us on Tuesday. We're in this- surgery and on Thursday midday. I mean, we just felt so blessed that to have found Dr. Henderson. He just, uh, 
yeah, he, he was just great. If, you, if you're seeing this, doctor, I can't thank you enough. So it's been four days, and you can see I'm up and about. Yeah. Now, I do have right now some residual nerve stuff going on. I'm hoping and I'm, I'm believing that I will get better, but I have some weird yeah. feelings in my, I mean, the nerve's been jangled yeah. for a month. Yeah, that nerve, you, you traumatize that nerve, and it's going to take time. Right, so just, you know, so I'm hoping that I'll be 100%, but if I'm not, I'm still so grateful. I'm having a little bit of issues with balance, a little bit of issues with sensations. It feels like, like I'm wearing fuzzy socks with mm -hmm. a hole ripped out of one. I mean, it feels really weird, but I am also noticing that I'm listing to the left a lot. So I'm being very careful, but there are some other points we wanted to make. Um, so, like, okay, so I had to pay for some of this out of pocket, for yeah. most of this out of pocket. Yeah. This, for some reason, was considered elective surgery, and, and I don't know that my doctor said that, but I think that the insurance or something, and it's yeah. not elective. Unless you elect to be in excruciating pain for the rest of your life. I never should have been in pain as long as I was for a whole four weeks. So that part has me a little upset, you know, that because... The whole, the whole medical... I mean, well, wait, we well, made some mistakes too, but this whole the whole medical system in this country, it, right now, the way I look at it, it just sucks. Well, I just want to make the point that I'm fortunate. I am not you know, a single mom raising two kids, working in a diner. I would have lost my job right away. Oh, yeah. I would have There's lost no my way. job because I couldn't show up to work, number one. Um, and how would I have gotten the kids ready? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I feel so fortunate that I had Paul, but I also feel upset that if I have gone through this, then there are people out there that probably lost their jobs because of this, you know, didn't have the help to, you know, get the kids ready for school, or maybe mm -hmm. they got kicked out of their apartment. So my heart goes out to you, and that leads right into what you were saying about, talk about that, how the insurance sucks. The insurance paid $1,200 on a, on a more than a $5,000 um, pro, uh, procedure. The, I got everything discounted down like they do if you're gonna pay out of pocket. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit over $5,000, which I'm grateful for, yeah. but that's a lot of money. Yeah, imagine if you didn't have that money in the bank. What would what would your options have been? I mean, you since they're calling this elective, you know, it's it's like uh, yeah, we've got serious issues with our with our medical system here. And and I've never seen it more clearly than than I have over the last month. Just remember, health is more important than anything you need to have some money if you're thinking about doing this life you need to have some money so that you can afford to change your plans you need to have that emergency money and insurance now if this had happened to you because you're over 65 mm -hmm. you would not have the issues i've got medicare and i've got a supplement but bill. if it happened to you you wouldn't pay very much so this is something to think about if you're under 65 is to make sure your insurance is adequate mine I'm, I'm okay with, it pays a flat fee. I don't have any deductibles. I don't have any co-payments, but in this situation, the flat fee wasn't a whole lot. Before I came out on the road, um, long time viewers know I'm a, I'm a pretty serious cyclist and, and I was riding a lot and I crashed, ended up in intensive care for four days. I broke five ribs, collarbone, cracked vertebrae, collapsed a lung. I mean, I was a mess. And I was, like I said, four days in intensive care. I saw the bills that, that came through, but Medicare and my supplement covered them. But it was, it was a quarter of a million dollars. Let us know in the comments if your insurance concerns. We would love to hear that you have enough insurance before you go on the road because this is not yeah. something you want to overlook. So in a roundabout way, my back problems were caused by RV life. Before I hit the road, I was doing yoga, and I was doing it for 10 years. Now, longtime viewers know that I broke my hand about a year into RV life. So that first year in RV life, I continued to do yoga. Highly recommend a fifth wheel. You've got the tall roofs, you can tall ceilings, you can do the sun salutations and stuff. But when I broke my hand, I stopped doing yoga, and I never started it back up. So that was mistake number one. And then the biggest mistake 
was I was just sitting in RV furniture with an RV chair and doing my work six hours at a time editing videos and stuff. Now, yeah, these chairs, th this is the chair you sit in basically. Yes, yes. I mean, what, we have four of these, and, and you ch yeah, this is you spend eight hours a day sitting in one of these chairs. One thing that we did do right was um, I replaced the mattress. If you've never owned an RV, the RV mattresses are horrible. It doesn't matter how much you spend on your rig, you'll find those RV mattresses are terrible. We did have a good memory foam mattress. We do have a good one. Mm -hmm. But the sitting, so the combination of weakening my muscles by not doing yoga and then sitting in a non-ergonomic fashion was mm -hmm. was bad so we are going to fix that we'll have an upcoming video about the renovations that we make yeah <laughs> it's going to be interesting it's going to be a, a major renovation of the of the inside of the camper many of you have reached out via email and asked what's going on we haven't seen a video from you guys um is there something wrong here's and a little secret that a lot of people that are on youtube don't know there is something on every youtube channel page called community or at least on when your channel gets big enough you get this community tab so we actually posted the last two weeks on that page but you won't know that we've posted unless you ring the bell i just want to say i'm so grateful to be sitting to be able to walk i actually I had been laying in the truck every time that we moved anywhere or mm -hmm. drove anywhere. I had to lay in the back. Mm -hmm. So I rode in the front seat yesterday. We Yes, we drove down to Dolphin Island about 40 minutes. And, and I got to look and I was like, wow, it's so nice to see palm trees because yeah. I had not been looking out since we were yeah. in Kentucky for the and last you month. you even got out of the truck and walked around uh, Fort Gaines. It's an mm -hmm. uh, mil old military fort that dates back to the early 1800s, I think 1821. We want to thank you guys so much as you can tell we've kind of been through it this past month it's made it so much easier having your love and support and we it, we are just moved to tears by how much love we've gotten from you all yeah i i second all of that and just from the heart you guys are the are the best i mean i've been reading your comments as you know i don't often respond in the comment section but I do read them all, and, and uh, they, a lot of them have, have brought me to tears. They've just been so great. So it's good to be back, and I have to say we are now done with back videos, and we are going to be giving you lots of exciting content, and we're excited about that. Yeah, so. we got a lot more. We got a lot of stuff in the can already. That It's that, that just a matter of editing and getting up, which is what Liz's job is. I'm, I'm just... I'm just the eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're the talent on the channel. <laughs>